Worst movies I've seen. There are plenty of good movies out there nowadays. With that said, there are also lots of terrible ones. Whether it's their plot, delivery, characters, or all of these. Some movies are a massive waste of time. Fortunately for you, I suffered through a couple of movies, so you won't have to. This is Detective Recap, and here's a list of the worst movies I've seen. First on the list is Jaws, The Revenge from 1987. This movie is somehow one of the most laughable when it comes to underwater monster flicks. This takes the cake even from ridiculous movies like Sharknado and the flick with the mutant piranhas. Have you ever thought about what would happen if sharks held judges? Yeah, that's the plot of this movie. This sequel expects the audience to believe that a shark wants revenge on the family that killed its skin in the first Jaws movie. It even managed to swim from New York to Bahamas. I mean, we can forgive the campy effects of the movie. After all, it was made in the late 80s. However, the ridiculous plot didn't really help. This movie marked the start of the franchise's downfall. Next up is Misfits from 2021. Picture the Fast and Furious movies without the innovative action scenes and appealing characters. This is what the film is. An uninspired flick hoping to ride the coattails of car heist movies. Not even a solid cast of Jamie Chong, Tim Roth, and Pierce Brosnan can save this train wreck of a movie. Imagine how bad a film is that even Pierce Brosnan couldn't fix it. This James Bond for crying out loud. At least it looks like he's having fun. Sadly, the same can't be said about the audience who stuck sitting through terrible, painful one-liners. Who thought the line, I don't date them, I kill them, would be a good idea? The plot is recycled from every other heist movie ever made. You'll be better off re-watching the Fast and Furious franchise instead of watching this movie. Seriously, this movie is much worse than those flicks. At number 8 is a recent movie called Home Sweet Home Alone. Frankly, I would be surprised if you knew this movie came out. I know, I speak for everyone when I say, please leave the Home Alone franchise alone. The original movie is a classic as far as Christmas movies go, and Home Alone 2 is the same as its predecessor. Some might argue that it's a misunderstood gem. Even the three sequels that followed understood one thing. We're supposed to root for the kid and against the home invaders. In this reboot, the home invaders are oddly empathetic. On the other hand, the kid acts like a jerk from start to finish. This film just doesn't capture the experience that the originals did. Remaking classics rarely succeeds nowadays. This movie did not only waste a talented cast, but it also ruined a popular IP. Honestly, they would have fared better if they remade Stone Alone with Ryan Reynolds. Next up is Don't Look Up. This film was nominated for four Oscars, including Best Picture and Best Editing. With a star-studded cast, why would we choose this as a bad movie? Well, it's that simple fact that people lauded this movie as great when it's nothing but great. Let's start off with this message. The premise of the movie is a comet is about to hit Earth and no one seems to care except for Jennifer Lawrence and Leo. Basically, the message is stop climate change now. I have nothing against the message, but it's the fact that the jokes keep getting dragged like an SNL skit giving the same punchline. Also, look at the fact that it was nominated for Best Editing. A TikToker found a shot of the crew left in the movie. The director defended it by saying it was intentional to capture the weirdness of filming during COVID, but honestly it didn't do anything for the film or its message. I believe that the director just said this to cover his tracks. This wasn't the only editing issue. You can go on Reddit and see that there are more issues. There are a ton of freeze frames into overlapping dialogue, which is really jarring to see. Number 6. I can go on with these the entire day. Number 6 is the Emoji Movie. What an awful animated film. The Emoji Movie may be the worst animated movie ever made. If not, it is totally in the top 3. 2017 saw the release of the live adaptation of Death Note. 
Saying that movie is disappointing is an understatement. Despite that, I can confidently say that the Emoji movie is worse. Before it was even released, the film was hated for its goofy concept. This is despite the strong voice cast that the film has. Strong writing and filmmaking can make a huge difference. Sadly, the creators of this movie failed to realize this. Take the Lego movie for example. It may also have a silly concept, but it was liked by the audience. The blatant product placements in the Emoji movie didn't do the film any favors too. Many people even describe the movie as a movie-length commercial because of these product placements. Next is Mortal Kombat Annihilation. This movie is a direct sequel to the original film. The plot starts just minutes after the conclusion of the first movie. The first Mortal Kombat is far from being a classic. However, it was a guilty pleasure for many people. Unfortunately, its sequel wasn't able to deliver the same experience. We can even say that it tried way too hard. The movie has so much B-movie terribleness that it confuses moviegoers. Disappointed and confused are not the ideal reactions after seeing movies like this. Sadly, this was the case for the unfortunate people who watch this film in theaters. This video game adaptation is one of the worst reviewed films of all time. It was even denounced by Ed Boon, co-creator of Mortal Kombat. The film features another Caucasian portraying Raiden and, and other blatant cases of whitewashing. It also has a terrible script, acting, and boring fight scenes. Terrible scripts and acting are forgivable in these types of movies. However, fight sequences in a film based on a fighting game should be good. Fortunately for everyone, the planned sequel for this movie was cancelled. Next on the list is The Batman and Robin. This superhero movie that came out in 1997 is also star started. And as established earlier, a good cast doesn't always make a good movie. Director Joel Schumacher almost single-handedly destroyed an entire genre with this movie. His previous Batman film, Batman Forever, was also a letdown to fans and critics alike. His films simply couldn't compare to Tim Burton's take on the adventures of our favorite caped crusader. The movie was so terrible it made Forever look good. It is as if the production team watched the 60s Batman show, took a lot of acid and started making this film. Everyone was so surprised when George Clooney was cast as Batman. Many even considered Clooney the most miscast Batman in film history. Heck, even Batfleck is a better choice for me. Yep, I said it. The casting choice for the other characters in the film also didn't help. I mean, casting a muscular Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. Freeze? Really? The ridiculous lines, intentional or not, also made things worse for the movie. Some movies are so bad, they're good. Sadly, this one is just plain terrible. The film's failure led to the fifth movie in the series getting cancelled. The movie was supposed to be named Batman Unchained. Coming at number 3 is The Avatar Last Airbender. The Last Airbender really lived up to its name when it came out. Unfortunately, not in the way the director intended it to be. M. Night Shyamalan Ding Dong knows how to ruin a franchise. The original plan was for this movie to kick off an epic trilogy. Instead, it became the first and last Avatar live adaptation film. The film seems to focus way too much on the special effects. Its plot is rushed and acting is wooden. There are even accusations of whitewashing. People who are familiar with the source material will surely agree. If you are curious about this movie, it is based on a three season animated series. Go watch that one instead. You'll enjoy every single episode, promise. This movie was based on such a brilliant show. The fact that the adaptation was botched made people really mad. A terrible film is one thing, but a terrible adaptation of promising material is worse. Shame on you. At number 2 is the Fifty Shades of Grey trilogy. There's just no way I couldn't include this in our list. Choosing just one in the trilogy wouldn't be fair, as they're all terrible. 
2015 was probably one of the worst years in modern movie history. In that year, films like Ridiculous 6, Fantastic Four, and Fifty Shades of Grey came out. The film is based on E.L. James' novels, all of which are critically derided and quite controversial. However, the movie was not hated because of its source material, the film is just terrible. The acting and filmmaking are poor, but I'm sure nobody expected to see Oscar-worthy material when they came and watched this movie. We all know why people want to see this movie. Wink, wink. Even then, people expecting sexual scenes were disappointed. These scenes were a total letdown due to the uncommitted performance of the cast. They were also a lot tamer compared to how they were in the novels. In short, the scenes were soft core and the fans wanted them to be hardcore. All in all, the movie was a horrible experience for all demographics. And drum roll, number one on our list is The Room. This movie is considered a classic by many, but not in a good way. I did not hurt her, I did not. Uh, uh, hi, Mark. This line instantly became a meme when the internet found out about this movie. People watching the movie for the first time might think it is satire. Unfortunately, it is not. For it is... I, I'm confused. Uh, uh, I'm not sure. Oh, my brain hurts. When a movie gets compared to getting stabbed in the head, you'll know there's something wrong. If you think Birdemic was terrible, you'll be surprised at how worse the room is. The film was written and directed by Tommy Wiseau. Oh, and did we mention that he's also the main character? <laughs> oh, yeah. Tommy plays a banker in San Francisco named Johnny. The film centers on how Johnny copes with the infidelities of his fiancée, Lisa. With how the scenes in the movie play out, it's surprising we even understood what it's about. It is littered with terrible acting and awkward intimate scenes. The nonsense plot tries and fails miserably to convince the audience that it's authentic. This movie does a lot of swings and misses each and every single one of them. Well, that's all for the worst movies I've seen. Now it's up to you whether you'll stay away from these movies or watch them out of curiosity. I watched and suffered from these terrible movies, so you won't have to. Let us know which films you absolutely hated in the comments below. Ciao. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.